I'm often asked, where would I go for dinner or lunch in Wichita Falls that you can take an out-of-town guest, or if you're brand new, what restaurants do you want to explore? And that's what we're talking about today. And please stay tuned to the end of this video for something very, very special if you love local cuisine. So we're getting started right now with my seven favorite homegrown restaurants in Wichita Falls. You know, I have one rule when I visit a new city or location, and that is always try local food. So if you are new or you haven't tried these wonderful places that I'm going to share with you, or if you got out of town guests, make sure you go to one of these seven or all seven because they are all worth the trip. You know, you can find a fast food chain in any city that you ever travel to, any day of the week. But what is so exciting is exploring local and unique cuisine. And we have a lot of unique and local cuisine here in Wichita Falls. It was hard, but I narrowed it down to my top seven favorite homegrown restaurants in Wichita Falls. Nothing compares to a local eatery with menus that are unique and out of this world and also have a great story behind them. So being from Southern California, I've had some amazing food at some amazing restaurants. Can I say amazing one more time? And these seven restaurants, these eateries here in Wichita Falls, compete on all levels for incredible food and atmosphere. I take family and friends from out of town guests to them because they continue to deliver not only great flavor, great food, great atmosphere. And I was trying not to make this a two hour video, so forgive me, it might be a little long, but it's worth the stories behind them. So let's get started on that top seven list, and they are not in any particular order, so please don't take them that way. They are just awesome, every single one of them. So our first one on our list, I don't want to call it number one, it's the first one on the list is Gypsy Kitchen and Bar. We just call it Gypsy Kit here. It's hard to pinpoint the culinary genre of Gypsy Kit, but according to its owner, Tegan Couch, it is most definitely a Gypsy cuisine. We take everything from Asian to Mexican to Spanish influence, and of course, Texan influence. And then she says they kind of mold it all together and come up with their own gypsy cuisine. And it is scrumptious. Some of Gypsy Kit's most popular dishes are ones that are award-winning. And so you really want to check out their Dr. Pepper pulled pork tacos, their kimchi bacon fries, ahi tuna tacos, and of course you can't forget their amazing burgers. My favorite is this scrumptious creamed corn dish that they don't make all the time. If you have a chance to see it on the menu, make sure you share it with the table because it will be gone in seconds. Gypsy Kit is also well known for its fun happy hour atmosphere with live music, special beers on tap, amazingly, and incredibly friendly staff, and its close proximity to downtown events. The first experience I ever had with Gypsy Kit was I took my family there for an open mic night. Those are fun and exciting, and I encourage you to go down and test out your artistic talents at an open mic night. The number two eatery on our list is Progress and Provisions Craft Kitchen. A new American restaurant serves up familiar dishes in a new and inventive way, and that's an understatement. Kyle Dalka, the chef owner, started out at another of our top seven eateries, Carrot, we'll talk about them in a second, and was such an amazing artist in his own right, he decided to open his own restaurant and make his own food. And as an owner chef, Kyle wants Wichitans to have it both ways at Progress and Provisions. This up and coming chef could be in any large city, but he chooses Wichita Falls as his home and serves a provisions burger with two freshly ground patties on a mm, pillowy bun. Now for locals who want a darn delicious version of a perennial favorite, that burger is to die for. Now Kyle says it this way, provisions is the act of supplying things. So we're in the act of supplying food in a very progressive way, thus progress and provisions. 
And progressive is Kyle, definitely. He's always looking for something exciting to put on the menu, made from scratch, for everyone from beef eaters to vegans, and he sources ingredients locally whenever possible. That's his mission. The bread that they make is made from scratch, and Kyle used very much out-of-the-box thinking during this recent pandemic because he just started a food truck. We never missed any of their delicious cuisine. So think French toast with chocolate hazelnut spread, pancakes with rhubarb compote and lemon zest butter, and more offerings than you can even imagine. One of my personal favorites is their Brussels sprouts and poutine. You have got to go and try everything on that menu. We like to take family and friends, get one of everything and share it with the table. It's fantastic for family style. Number three on our list is Pho Corner Wichita Falls. Now what a success story Philip Allen, the owner of Pho Kitchen, has to share. They were about to open right as the pandemic hit, but they couldn't. The restaurants got shut down. And instead of crying in his soup, no pun intended, Fa Corner paired with MSU to help local families and students, giving them groceries. They hadn't even opened and they were giving away food and groceries. They began giving food to these families right from their restaurant. And what a way to make an impact on your new community, giving away hundreds of bags of groceries. They inspired us before we ever knew how good their food was. So what a unique experience to be scheduled to open just as a pandemic hits and then change that into something that you would begin to help others in your community. And of course, he didn't think anything of it. He said everyone would do that. But that's what true Wichita Falls spirit is. And I was just incredibly blessed to watch that happen. And then I was so excited when I saw that 400 international students that had become stranded because of travel bans were then helped by pho. So here's the thing, this place is incredible. And if you've never experienced pho, which a lot of people say pho, I say pho, because that's the Vietnamese way to say it. It's, a, it's Vietnam's unofficial national dish. It's exported with pride all over the world. And pho consists of flat rice noodles in a light meat-based broth. The broth to me is just incredible and they do an amazing job. The dish is usually accompanied by basil and lime and chili and other extras on the side. Pho is one of my favorite meals anytime and not only do they have at Pho Corner amazing beef, chicken, or seafood pho, but a brunch on the weekends that is absolutely to die for. And some of the favorites that show up on that menu are from the chef who loves to blend cultures by adding his own twist. So check out this dish, this Peruvian dish known as causa limon, a golden Yukon potato, purple Peruvian potatoes, blue crab salad, masago, togarashi, and chimichurri. What a blend of cultures. It's served cold, it's light and it's fresh and it's not on the menu all the time, but this chef comes up with amazing dishes every week. So try brunch at Pho Corner. Number four on our list is Gidget's Sandwich Shack. Julie Spence, who owns Gidget, describes it as eclectic, homegrown, and 100% their creation. Julie and her friend Melissa started it back in 2004 after a girl's trip to Galveston. They were out on the porch down there in Galveston drinking wine and they're talking about how much they wanted to be business owners because they really weren't loving their jobs. One of them was a pharmaceutical rep and she thought, let's just roll on back to Wichita Falls and start a coffee shop. Why not? They were looking for the perfect ingredients for this eclectic persona that they wanted to make for this coffee shop. And they just happened to see a panini maker and the dream was born. They came back with a panini grill and an espresso machine and a dream. This Texas sized panini that Julie and her friend came up with was the start. 
They named it after Melissa's daughter, Gidget, and they were off to the races. They had five sandwiches and they never looked back. These ladies knocked it out of the park by being eclectic in a magical way. You have to try their Monte Cristo waffle sandwich, which is exactly what it sounds like. A Monte Cristo with waffles as the bread. A little over the top, but bring your appetite because you can share it. You won't find regular booze and tables in this old bank building that they converted into Gidget's. Instead, you find a homey feel with couches, mismatched chairs, like you find at your friend's house or maybe at your grandma's house. And it's in this amazing building that has the history of the bank where this used to be the first bank robbery in Wichita Falls. So history everywhere. And if you're looking for a relaxed local lunch, look no further than Gidget's. A soup and sandwich combo with a little dessert on the side will leave you satisfied and wanting to come back day after day after day. Number five is Carrot Bar and Bistro. A local businesswoman, Amber Schachter, owns and operates this great eatery downtown. Giving a nod to its history in downtown Wichita Falls, the Zales Building. Once home to the first Zales jewelry store, you need to look at my video about the history of Wichita Falls, Amber reopened it as Carrot, K-A-R-A-T, Bar and Bistro. Carrot, located in the original Zales jewelry store in downtown Wichita Falls, is justly named Carrot, as in the diamonds, as in the diamond spelling. Just as Zales made quality jewelry accessible to everyone, Carrot Bar and Bistro aims to bring fresh ingredients and quality food to North Texas. They focus on serving fresh whole foods and are pleased to offer vegetarian meal options. You can enjoy locally sourced dishes that are handmade from scratch, as well as classic prohibition style cocktails, another homage, and an international wine list. Trust me, I've tried their wine, it's fantastic. When you visit Carrot Bar and Bistro, the Zales building, this bar and bistro gives a nod to its history in downtown Wichita Falls. Brunch is an extravaganza and anything Benedict can be found on the menu. If you like hollandaise, this is the place to be. They have some home fries for breakfast brunch that are frankly indescribable. Just make sure you mention this video. And number six, Luigi's Pizza. Hands down the best Italian food in Wichita Falls. Everything is made fresh daily and mmm, so yummy. Deanna and Mario opened this eatery right outside of Shepherd Air Force Base after having traveled the world cooking, including in Italy. Mario actually has Italian history. Thinking a base would be a great resource for clientele it was, and word spread far and wide because their food was so good and they are so inviting. More than that, the owners, Deanna and Mario, are incredible. They're generous, they're amazing people, not just owners, because you feel like you're dining at someone's home in Italy. Just as a side note, Deanna and Mario are also my neighbors, and what amazing people they are. They're so helpful to my mom, who's 84. They're so helpful to my niece, who lives across the street from them. So not only are they just incredible business owners and have incredible food, they are salt of the earth people. One of my favorite dishes is the trio. It's lasagna, manicotti, and spinach ravioli. And baked ziti, amazing. Their pizzas are bar none some of the best in the West. I can testify because I've eaten a lot of pizza. And of course, I talked about this on another video. Their tiramisu is homemade every day, and it is by far the best tiramisu in the world. Take my word for it. So check out Mario's Pizza over there by the base. And number seven is Fox Hills Restaurant and Gardens. The creator, John Hershey, whose name you may see on lots of real estate signs throughout the community, started this farm-to-table dining spot, which features food grown on site. Yes, they have their own garden. They have an amazing brunch on Sundays, 
the best Bloody Mary, virgin or otherwise, that I've ever had. And you must try their bacon wrapped dates. Now, those aren't grown in the garden, but they're just delicious. Anything with bacon. Any of their dishes made from the garden are spectacular. And almost everything on the menu is grown or raised on site with a heavy emphasis on healthy, locally grown produce. You know, Fox Hills is located in a home built in 1922 on eight acres of land just off Kemp between Seymour Highway and 9th Street. And as if the pandemic did not serve up a sucker punch for restaurants, Snowpocalypse that we just had delivered a body blow that Fox Hills is still recovering from. They had some serious plumbing issues, but they are coming back and the gardens are already bulging and covered with tomatoes and okra and peppers. They are coming back and they are coming back strong. So when the previous homeowners told Hershey about the wild foxes that lived in the nearby woods before they bought the property, they would sit out every evening by the pool and throw out day old bread. They decided that they were going to call this Fox Hills because these foxes seem so tame and they would come up and eat out of your hand. And so the name was born. Now, there are lots of restaurants in Wichita Falls. There are homegrown restaurants that I haven't even touched on here, but I've eaten at all of these. I think they are incredible stories and I would love for you to experience them. And so here's what I wanted to share with you at the end of this video is if you mention this video at any of these restaurants, they will give you a coupon for something really fun. And you just have to say, hey, I watched that video on your Wichita Falls YouTube. So that's all for now. Y'all come back now, you hear?